Welcome back to Lane Football. Today, we're talking about the deepest wide receiver class that I have graded in my entire life. Now, I am pretty young, but that is something to be said. This is a very special group right here, and I am very excited to share my tier list with y'all. In the next two months, while we wait for the NFL draft, you and I both know time ticks slower. It's just a fact. It happens every single draft season, and in that next two months, I'm your guy. Go subscribe below, because I'm going to spoon feed you this NFL draft content every single day until April 25th. Now listen up, y'all. It is time for the 2024 NFL draft wide receiver tier list, and this is the first time I have ever had, I mean ever, had two players in my god tier. Let's get it started. Introducing my two players in my god tier, y'all know their names, say it with me, Marvin Harrison Jr. out of OSU and Malik Neighbors out of LSU. I'm sure you've heard this 5,000 times, you're going to hear it once more. Marvin Harrison Jr. is the complete package NFL wide receiver. He is draft ready to go on day one the second he steps onto that stage. People say this about prospects every single year, but let me be clear with you. Marvin is the truth. Marvin can truly do it all. Route running, contested catches. The dude's got footwork like he's 5'9 and weighs 180. It just makes no sense. He is a true home run hitter this year in the draft, and he's a player so good that some NFL GMs will have to decide whether they want a franchise quarterback or a surefire hit wide receiver one in Marvin Harrison Jr. It doesn't quite get better than that, folks. Marvin is the real deal. Next, we got Malik Neighbors out of LSU. For y'all that don't know, Malik Neighbors is a freakish athlete. He's got short area quickness and the speed to go the distance, and this heavily weighs into his yak ability. When the ball is in Malik Neighbors' hands, all you can do as the opposing defense is watch and pray. To put this in perspective, every time Malik Neighbors caught a pass, there was a 15% chance he was going to score. That is outrageously high and just gives you a taste of how explosive he truly is. Malik Neighbors is a complete wide receiver and could truly do it all, but I would say his second biggest X factor that separates him from the rest is his contested catch ability. He's the master of the inside fade route and he was damn near unstoppable last year. Malik is going to absolutely kill it next year and I hope he lands on a good team in this draft. Those were our God tier players, and let's move into the Elite tier where I got one player standing alone. Holding down the Elite tier by himself, it is the man, the myth, the legend, Rome Odunze out of Washington. Rome Odunze is another victim to having Marvin Harrison Jr. in his wide receiver class. This guy is so ridiculously talented. Rome is a big body, physical wide receiver that makes his money as a route technician. Rome can truly dissect defenses all by himself. I know he had a great supporting cast there at Washington around him, but man, he is special. Now we're looking at a wideout that's big, physical, and runs great routes. That's a rare combo right there, but what's the one thing that can make him just a little bit more dangerous? What if his contested catch rate was 67%? Oh dear lord, help us all, you got it, I do not want to cover that man. Romo Dunze has exceptional talent, and I truly do believe that he would be the one overall wide receiver in the majority of these other classes. Those are my top three wideouts, similar to everybody else, trust me, I know. Let's shake this thing up, let's get into my great tier of these wide receivers. If you're still watching this video and you're enjoying it, I would appreciate if you dropped a like. This video alone took a hundred hours to make. It seems silly, but it goes a long way in helping with the growth of this channel. Thank you very much, and let's keep this tier list going. In my great tier of 2024 NFL Draft wide receivers, we got the Fab Five right here for y'all. First, we got Brian Thomas Jr. out of LSU, Troy Franklin out of Oregon, Xavier Worthy out of UT, Ladd McConkey out of Georgia, and Adonai Mitchell out of UT. All of these great tier wideouts come in different shapes, sizes, speeds, X factors. Let me break their game down for you. There is no better way to kick this list off than with Brian Thomas Jr. Off the rip, let's get one thing straight. Thomas is an athletic freak. Not only did we find this out from the combine, but if you watched any kind of film on this guy, you knew immediately that he was a different cat. Thomas is 6'3", 210, and runs a 4'3", My goodness, clearly, not everybody is made equal. Thomas used this elite athletic ability to be a true deep threat for the LSU Tigers. Of course, when you have an offense with Malik Neighbors on one side and Brian Thomas Jr. on the other, you can't double them both, you're going to have some problems. With this nightmare of a matchup for these DBs, Thomas caught 25% of his passes for touchdowns. Absolutely ridiculous. While Thomas is a fantastic athlete and one hell of a deep threat, the one question the NFL had on him was, can he run the full route tree? The majority of routes that he ran at LSU were fade routes. As an O coordinator, can you blame the guy? I totally understand understand. We got to see a little bit of Thomas run more of the full route tree during the combine, and I'm sure on his pro day, he's going to run every route imaginable. I'm not too concerned about this. This is a freak athlete, a great dude, and man, he pulls the football down and catches touchdowns. NFL GMs, get this guy on your roster. Next, we got Troy Franklin out of Oregon. As a wide receiver, your job is to get open, and Troy does that at an exceptional rate. Troy Franklin has burners on him and uses that speed to create some elite separation. Franklin runs the full route tree and finds numerous ways to get open. I hope Troy lands on a good team with a greater coordinator and just kills it in the NFL. Next, we got Xavier Worthy 
out of Texas. You might know this guy. Maybe. I don't know. You live under a rock? Do you check your phone? 421 is his new name. Xavier 421 Worthy is that guy. Now, in the past, wide receivers that have gotten extremely fast 40 times have been overranked, overdrafted, and things never really go right for them, to be honest. But before he even stepped foot in the combine, let's be clear. Worthy already had more than enough talent to get drafted at the back of the first round and, of course, the second. Xavier as a wide receiver has an extremely deep toolkit. He runs very good routes, setting up these DBs to create high-end separation. Of course, when you run a 4-2-1, it only makes that a little bit easier. Worthy also has fantastic hands, and his biggest ability, of course, is his yak ability. Xavier has great vision to pair at this speed and just puts these DBs in hell all game long. Worthy's been a stud since the day he stepped on campus at UT, and he's going to go to the NFL and do the same thing there. I got very high hopes for Xavier. Next, we got Lad McConkey out of Georgia. Lad's biggest X factor is that he gets open. It's football 101. It may be boring, but he does it so consistently, you just can't ignore it. Not only is Lad an elite route technician, Lad McConkey is very athletic. No, not sneaky athletic. No, not gritty athletic. Lad is an athletic wide receiver. Lad McConkey this year has been a late riser through the draft rankings. As he went to the Senior Bowl about a month ago and put his skills on display, so he tore up every single DB in those one-on-one -on -one drills. That is why myself and the entire community strongly believes that Lad will get drafted on that turn into the second round by the Carolina Panthers. He's going to get drafted and help out Bryce Young immensely develop as a quarterback. Wrapping up my great year, I got Adonai Mitchell out of UT. Adonai Mitchell is everything you want in a wide receiver one. Mitchell makes his routes seem effortless at the size he's at. He knows how to run solid routes and create very good separation. As UT's primary deep threat, Mitchell uses his advantage week in and week out. To pair this elite route running and separation, Mitchell has a Madden rating of 99 spectacular catch. The dude catches everything that comes his way. Like majority of these guys, Mitchell at the right spot with the right coach is going to kill it in the league. That was my massive list of great tier receivers. Now let's transition into my good tier of wideouts. This good tier is extremely deep and talented. Let's talk about all these prospects. To start this list off, we got Devontae Walker out of North Carolina, Keon Coleman out of Florida State, Roman Wilson out of U of M, Brendan Rice out of USC, Ricky Pearsall out of Florida, Jalen McMillan out of Washington, and Javon Baker out of UCF. Devontae Walker out of USC was Drake May's go-to guy on the team. Not only is it because he has fantastic hands, but more importantly, the guy can flat out fly. He was great at Kent State and also great for half a season at UNC. Walker has good size, is very fast, and can catch almost anything that's thrown his way. Keep an eye out for this guy. He's going to land somewhere nicely. Next, we got Keon Coleman. And there's been more debate on this wideout than any of them on this entire list. Keon flat out, no debates about it, has the best ball skills in this entire draft class. He wins contested catches like no other and can just pluck the ball out of air just effortlessly. What everyone keeps complaining about is his speed and separation. At the combine, he ran a 4-6-1, but in his drills, he was actually one of the fastest wideouts, not only in the gauntlet drill, but in majority of his routes. What does that tell me? The concern alone for speed doesn't make sense to me. If you're running routes at a high rate, why does it matter how fast I could run in a straight line? It's not a track meet, you know what I mean? It is a number to pay attention to, but it's not the end-all be-all for a guy going to the NFL. Those of you concerned with his separation, on scout team punt return, Keon would shatter my ankles daily, like clockwork. And I mean, look at me. I'm clearly an elite level NFL athlete. So as an inside source, I myself, I ain't worried and you shouldn't be either. Keon Coleman to the Chiefs, next prospect. Next we got Roman Wilson out of U of M. Roman does two things and does them at a high level. Roman gets open and he catches the football. What more do you want? I have a very good feeling Roman will fit as a perfect puzzle piece into an NFL offense and start immediately and make a real impact year one. Next, we got Brendan Rice out of USC. Brendan's got a lot of smaller attributes I like here and it ties together really well. His speed rips off the tape. I know at the combine he did not run as fast as everybody else, but he's one of those guys that just carries that football weight differently. Not every athlete runs the same with the pads on and Brendan's clearly the exception for that rule. He's got great hands, good yak ability and as Jerry Rice's son you know he runs good routes. Rice is just a very good overall wide receiver and he's gonna find himself in a good spot in the NFL. Next we got Ricky Pearsall out of Florida. Ricky is another guy who clearly benefited from the senior bowl. Releases, routes, and timing. Oh my. Ricky can create real separation out there on the field. The dude alone gets open and also had a pretty good combine to complement his athletic profile going into the draft. This guy Pearsall can play. Get him in the league and watch him eat. 
Next, we got Jalen McMillan out of Washington. On this loaded Washington offense, you got Romo Dunze, Jalen Polk, and Jalen McMillan. That is a lot of talent in one wide receiver core. A key theme here for a majority of my good tier players, Jalen runs fantastic routes. Jalen clearly knows how to manipulate these DBs and always finds himself open in the end zone. Last on this list, we got Javon Baker out of UCF. Javon is a fantastic all-around receiver. He shows the ability to run very good routes and make contested catches all over the field. To pair nicely with this route, he's got a fantastic release game off the line. Good luck pressing this guy. I love Javon Baker as a prospect. And this wideout class just keeps on on going with the depth and we got some very good prospects here in the solid tier as well let's run through these players first on my list we got Xavier Leggett out of South Carolina Jamari Thrash out of Louisville Jalen Polk out of Washington Malachi Corley out of Western Kentucky and Jermaine Burton out of Alabama. Xavier Leggett is probably the most unique prospect on this entire tier list in my opinion. He's got very good size, can fly down the field, and nobody, I mean nobody, can tackle this guy. With all that being said, his contested catch is money. There were numerous times last year where Spencer Rattler would say, screw it, Xavier's down there somewhere, he hooked the ball 60 yards, Leggett would make a great play on the ball, and he would take it to the crib more times than I can count. I would call Xavier a gadget guy, but that's not really what he is. He's got more skill than that. Xavier Leggett is my true boom or bust potential wideout. I am praying this guy lands with a good coach, because if he does, he's going to tear up the league. Next, we got Jamari Thrash out of Louisville. For Jamari, I wrote three things to keep it short and sweet. Route running, releases, and excellent hands. He jumps off the line, avoids contact, gets open, and makes the catch. Jamari's just a good, solid wideout, and I know he's going to find himself on a 53-man roster come the fall. Next, we got Jalen Polk out of Washington. Polk is a jump ball machine. When in doubt, Michael Penix Jr. would send this ball flying down the field in his direction, and he would come down with it majority of the time. Jalen is a big physical receiver and who will be a true red zone target in the NFL. Next, we got Malachi Corley out of Western Kentucky. Mr. Corley has been given the title in the past few months of the next Debo Samuel. Big shoes to fill right there, but you can see what they're talking about when you look at his tape. Arm tackles, forget it. Full body tackles, he runs through them. While he did play with smaller competition, he just ran through these players like it was truly nothing. Malachi did not run a 40 time at the combine, so his pro day is going to be huge for him. Of course, to show how fast he can run, but more importantly, in my opinion, to show these NFL teams and coaches that he can run the full route tree. But of all the things I just said, the most important thing that I have written down, I will tell you now. Malachi Corley has Steve Smith's stamp of approval. If Steve likes him, I like him. Malachi Corley, go be great. To wrap this list up, we got Jermaine Burton out of Alabama. Jermaine does two things very well. He creates solid separation and he's got good hands. If you perfect those two abilities in the NFL, you will be in the league for a very long time. Guys, that was my solid tier. Let's go into my final tier where I got tons of talent across the board. In this talent to develop tier, we got some studs. Let's go through them. First, we got Taj Washington out of USC. Anaya Smith out of Texas A&M. Malik Washington out of Virginia and Luke McCaffrey out of Rice. These guys are all great at something. Let's go through this list so I can tell you their strengths. Taj Washington, as Caleb Williams' best friend, is a true burner down the field. He's on the lighter side, but dude, he is a deep threat, and he gets behind the defense consistently. Anaya Smith at a Texas A&M is a yak machine. This guy has fantastic vision, nasty juke moves. It is fun to watch this guy play. You got to make sure to throw him some bubbles and set him some screens. This guy's got true talent. For Malik Washington out of Virginia, he does two things at a very high level. He creates very good separation with route running and is also a fantastic yak threat. Then Luke McCaffrey at a rice, the guy gets open. He flies on the field. He's got good hands. He's a quarterback's best friend. It looks like you watched to the end and didn't hate the video. To see more content like this, you might as well like and subscribe. We got a whole two months till the NFL draft, and I would be honored to feed you this draft content all the way till April 25th. Comment below what you would change. I respond to every single one. Also, if I missed anybody, please let me know. This is our fourth tier list. We got a quarterback one, a running back one, and even a tight end. I'm going to link the quarterback one right here for you to view, but if you want to see the others, I'm going to link that in my channel right here. I appreciate y'all more than you no, have a great one guys. Peace. Let's kick off this elite tier in the best way possible. The Heisman himself, Jaden Daniels at LSU. Where do I even start with this guy? Amazing pocket presence, the most beautiful deep ball down the field that you've ever seen. Not to mention speed and agility out the gate. He's elusive as hell and you can't get this man on the ground.